Let me ask you a question. How many of you in the past year have traveled on an airplane? So quite a few, quite a few of us, right? Let me ask you another question. How many of you in the past couple of days have traveled in a car? That's basically all of us, right? That's probably how most of us got here. Transportation is one of the great achievements of modern technology. It allows us to get from place to place much more quickly than we otherwise would, and even more so, it affects our lives in more ways than we could possibly imagine. But technology is never done. It is never complete. It can always be improved. And I believe that the next leap we will take in transportation will be the integration of magnetic suspension, levitation, and propulsion into our transportation technologies of today. A technology you may have heard of is the magnetic levitating train. This is the form of transportation that is currently in use in Asia. The way it works is that superconducting coils in the car interact with electromagnets in the track, allowing the train to levitate. Now, this is very interesting because as the train levitates, it has very little friction. And because it has very little friction, it requires very little energy to keep the train in motion. If it were not for the very large amount of energy needed to levitate the train, this would be one of the most energy efficient forms of transportation in the world. But I want to talk more about how the train works. It would be largely impossible for this train to levitate if it were not for the use of superconductors. This is the term I used a little bit earlier, but you might be asking yourself, what is a superconductor? A superconductor is a material that, when brought to a very low temperature, exhibits an internal electrical resistance of zero. Now, what does this mean for us? It means that when the superconductor is brought to this very low temperature, all internal magnetic field lines passing through the material will be expelled. Now, this is very exciting because if a superconductor is cooled down while inside of a magnetic field, it can actually become trapped in that field. And what, and what I mean by trapped is that the material will resist both forces attempting to bring the superconductor closer to the magnetic source, as well as sources attempting to bring the material further from the magnetic source. This is very different than, say, how a magnet would interact in a magnetic field, as a magnet would either be indiscriminately pulled towards or away from that magnetic source. For an example of how a superconductor would behave in a magnetic field, we can go back to the magnetic levitating train. In the case of the train, superconducting coils in the train car become trapped in the field created by the track, and the train resists both the forces of gravity attempting to bring the train closer to the track, as well as the g-forces attempting to pull the train away from the track. When I first learned of the properties that superconductors can take at very low temperatures, I became very excited and very inspired. Being the natural scientist that I am, the only logical step to take next was to perform experiments with superconductors myself. After deciding to do this, I created a model of a maglev train that allowed me to demonstrate properties of magnetic levitation, propulsion, and suspension. After deciding to do this, over the next couple of years, I created this model. What you see in the image are ceramic superconducting disks. It is these disks that, when cooled to a very low temperature, will become trapped in a magnetic field. For the remainder of my talk, when I refer to superconducting disks with respect to my project, this is what I will be referring to. What I was able to do is I was able to cool these disks down with liquid nitrogen and suspend them in a magnetic field that I generated. What you see in the image is a bed of permanent magnets with the disk levitating over it and nitrogen evaporating off of the disk. So this is very nice. I was able to demonstrate magnetic levitation. But with this, I was unsatisfied. I not only wanted to show that the superconductor could levitate over and in a magnetic field, but also that it could follow a magnetic field. To do this, I created two different tracks, the first of which was straight, the second of which was an oval. In both cases, these tracks were composed of three rows of permanent magnets oriented in a specific way. Before I could show that the superconductor would follow these tracks, however, I had to solve one problem. Because the superconductors had to be so cold in order to demonstrate properties of, of superconductivity, because of the ambient temperature in the room, when demonstrating a superconducting disk by itself, it would quickly heat up and lose suspension within about 10 seconds. To solve this problem, I created a small balsa wood box to put the superconductor in. This balsa wood box, in addition to looking more like a train car, served to insulate the superconductor. So to clarify, what you see in the image is a small balsa wood box painted to look like a train car with a superconductor inside 
with a piece of foam on top. These components together could be considered the train car. What I was able to show is that the train car would levitate about half an inch over the track, circle the track with very little friction, and levitate for about 10 minutes. I was still not satisfied with this, however. I could show that the train car would levitate over the track and that it would move with very little friction, but in order to get it to move, I would have to push it. I wanted to create a train car that would be propelled around the track by itself. To do this, I created a new track, the track you see on the stage. As this track is much more complicated than the previous track, and in the interest of time, I will not be describing how it works, but briefly what it does. So this train car, this track, is similar to the previous tracks in that it has a bed of permanent magnets, which allows the same train car to levitate over the track, circle it with very little friction, and levitate for about 10 minutes. It's different in that I was able to create a new train car that could le levitate over the track and be propelled around the track. This tr train car is similar to the previous one we have seen in that it is also made of balsa wood, it also has superconductors inside of it, it also has a piece of foam, and it also levitates over the track. What's different is that it is slightly wider than the track and has fins that hang beneath the track. These fins have to them mounted two permanent magnets, and these magnets can interact with components that are mounted beneath the track. In this way, as that train car would circle the track, it could, the sensors would detect when the train car is approaching. As it approached, the electromagnets would be powered, and the train car would be propelled from magnet to magnet, and thus perpetually around the track. With this, I was satisfied. I had able to, I'd been able to demonstrate not only magnetic propulsion, uh, not only magnetic suspension and magnetic levitation, but also magnetic propulsion. However, understandably at this point, you might be thinking, Thomas, the train you made is cool, but why should we care? Let me give you just two reasons. First, I want to point out that the science used in my project is very similar to the science used in real maglev trains. In real maglev trains, there are superconducting coils and electromagnets in the, the car that interact with electromagnets in the track, allowing it to both levitate and be propelled. The problem is it requires an enormous amount of energy to levitate the train. This is due to the fact that it requires an enormous amount of energy to cool down the superconducting coils. This, however, I believe can be improved. Before the 1980s, superconductors used to have to be cooled down with liquid helium. Helium has a boiling point of negative 269 degrees Celsius. That's four degrees above absolute zero. In the 1980s, however, oxide superconductors were invented, and one of the great things about oxide superconductors is that they will demonstrate properties of superconductivity at much higher temperatures. These are the superconductors that I used in my project, and they're the reason why I was able to use liquid nitrogen to cool down my superconductors, and I did not need liquid helium. Though liquid nitrogen is still extremely cold, it is not nearly as cold as liquid helium. Technology can always be improved. And if superconductors are created that would become trapped in a field at temperatures closer to that of your freezer or warmer, the magnetic levitating trains would be one of the most energy efficient forms of transportation in the world. But magnetic levitating trains are not the only technology that can benefit from superconductors. Superconductors can be used in space, such as the docking of spacecraft. Because they trap at a distance, they can create strong, safe, vibration-resistant, non-contact connections. They could be used in coordinated modular flight or in connections in spacecraft. The, the possibilities are truly limitless for these applications. But these applications will never be created or put in place if it's not for innovative scientists coming up with these applications and working to improve superconductors. So to clarify my first point, even if nobody in here goes on to research superconductors, or even if nobody in here even goes on to learn more about them, my hope is that tomorrow, superconductors will be more widely known and widely understood than they were earlier today. For my second point, even if you hate science, and even if you couldn't care less what sort of technology was used in the future, what I want to convey to you through my passion for science and through what I created in my project is that if you follow your passion, and you do what you love, you will be much more happy and much more satisfied than if you had not. I leave you with this, and I thank you for letting me speak today.